Now, one other problem with this recently published study, this randomized trial, um, people were reluctant, it seems, to be randomized into the time-restricted eating group, into that fasting group. And I say that they were reluctant to get into that group because in the results, they report something called lost to follow-up. So people who committed to study, uh, once they were randomized into the two groups, um, and we'll emphasize another problem with those two groups in a moment, the people that were randomized into the time-restricted eating group they, uh, uh, seven of them were lost to follow up. So they were put into the group and then they didn't want to do anything to do with it and they, then the researchers couldn't contact them again. Seven people were lost from the fasting group. Only one was lost from the control group. So there's something I think about people very reluctantly being put into the fasting group and they didn't want to. Now, with that point in mind, I'll emphasize the second study that was published earlier this year that found um, a legion of benefits. Every outcome they looked at with time-restricted eating, they got better, um, whether it was fat loss, blood pressure loss, um, blood lipid improvements, insulin improvements, glucose improvements. Um, and I'm just, I think it's interesting to compare these two. One, both published this year um, and have very different findings. Now this study, which found significant improvements across the board, it was much, much smaller. I think, was it 19? People, Steve, do you remember? I think it was 19 subjects, but they all were they all self-selected in. So this is basically a case study where they had 19 patients who wanted to engage in time-restricted eating. I think there's something powerful to that where this group of people in the positive results study, they wanted to do time-restricted eating. They self-selected, they volunteered, they wanted to do it, as opposed to the group that I believe apparently were very reluctant insofar as the loss to follow-up was seven times higher. And Ben, weren't they just showing, they were not on a specific dietary restrictive, no. they were just eating whatever they wanted to eat, right? They yep. weren't eating an insulin-controlled diet or a ketogenic diet of any kind. And the time window was, was like 10 hours, wasn't it? Yeah, so that's, an excellent point. that's another point, yeah. So what these studies both have in common is that uh, neither gave specific dietary advice beyond here's your eating window, stick to it. So that's a strength that they both have in common, but it's a weakness that we would all agree to. If you're going to encourage someone to time-restricted eat, to time-restricted eating or fasting, I think you really ought to be playing with that other lever which is arguably at least as relevant, which is manipulate, manage your macronutrients in a way that if much of the power of time-restricted eating and fasting is that you lower your insulin, imagine if you can couple the insulin-lowering effect of fasting or time-restricted eating with the insulin-lowering effect of controlling carbohydrates, prioritizing protein, and fill with fat. So I do think there's a lot of synergy. I hate to use that word because it's so cliche, but there's a lot of power in combining time-restricted eating with manage your macronutrients which they didn't do, but that, that's okay because it allows us to compare these two studies head to head. Now, Rich, you'd mentioned the eating window. I think that's another point to mention. In the negative results study, finding nothing really beneficial about the time-restricted eating, the, the time of ending your diet, the food for the day was 8 p.m. As opposed to the positive finding, their last meals on average were at 6 p.m. And they, they actually measured that on average, the average subject was eating their last calories four hours before they were going to bed. And that wasn't, they didn't report on that in the negative results study. And I can't help but wonder to what degree were the benefits, the positive study was the benefit partly because they were sleeping better, which they did indicate, as opposed to no improvements in sleeping in the time-restricted eating study. A longer window after they finish eating before they yeah, went to bed. Yeah, more time for the food to digest. I worry if, they, if these people in the negative results study are anything like me, they had to fight the temptation to just binge all evening. You know, when suddenly they're home, they, they are... They are, you know, that's quiet time. The day is slowed down. They're ready to sit down and binge watch Netflix, and they're ready to binge eat. 